Folks, what is going on? What the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. We are back in Total War Warhammer 3 at Glacier Lake. And once again, our dear President Tyranid, a.k.a. Wicked, is going to bring us some awesome action here. This one against the Druki. The Druki here deciding to go with no ranged play against Korn. Interesting. Obviously, they were very worried about protecting their range against a lot of capability that Korn has to shut them down with Flesh Hounds, the Furies, with, you know, Bloodthirster, all kinds of stuff that can move fast and fly around the battlefield. But let's take a look at what Korn has brought. They do have a Bloodthirster. This is Korn's Bloody Fist Bloodthirster, of all things, so a very powerful one. We're going to see three Marauder Horsemen with Throwing Axes. I really like the Marauder Horsemen for Korn. And then we're going to have the Bloodbrute Behemoth mixed with Scarbrand. I mean, this is an absolutely insane trio here. Look at that goon potential. And then we're going to mix that in with a couple of Minotaurs and Great Weapons who are enjoying some buffs in the last patch. This is a very small army, very elite, and very deadly for Korn. And it is up against a no-range uh, Druki who are now going to have to hope to beat Korn in a straight-up melee. They do have the Sorceress of Shadows here. He does have a pit of shades, and used properly, it could cause some pretty solid damage to some of these units, but the pit isn't going to do anything um, to those goons. Here comes a Doom Bolt. Might as well play that there. I think that's coming off the Doom Fire Warlocks. Malice is a very tough character, but he doesn't have a lot of backup here. Doesn't it? I, I don't know. We'll see. See what the Dark Elves play here. We see a Soul Blight coming down, so there's some debuffing going on. But I mean, uh, Corn thrives in these big melees. I mean, there's a lot of damage dropping. Look at this Corn keeping its Marauder Horseman back and just causing issues. Boy, those Argoneth Executioners. Well, they are taking a savage beating there. That's bad news for the Druki. Here comes the, another Argoneth Executioner. And it, I mean, that's a lot of armor piercing. When Malice is getting thrown around in here, he is out of his element. Very tough character, but no one can take this kind of beating now. He can use his transformation to essentially heal. And uh, assuming that it gets used at the right moment, potentially get a whole lot more play here. But he has barely put a dent. Now remember, the Blood Brute Behemoth as well heals while it's in melee. So it's a tough unit to pull down when you don't have missiles. And not bringing missiles here, if I have to guess, is probably going to come back to haunt the uh, Druki. I believe, yep, there's the transformation into Zarkon. Again, very tough character, but there's very little to stop Scarbrand and his minions from having their way with Zarkon now. Oh my gosh. Look at them ripping into him. Wow. That's through the enfeebling foe. Oh, the chunks coming out of Zarkon right now. Woo! I have never seen Malice get beat down so hard in any melee ever. But he is. And quite honestly, this infantry blob has no prayer of stopping these guys. They are going to absolutely savage Malice, and then they're going to kill the rest of the army, and there is no one who is going to do a dang thing about it. Malice can run, but he really can't hide, because the Bloodthirster can take to the skies and hunt him down. He can try and slip away here, and that's exactly what he's doing. Let's see, maybe, a, yeah, probably another Doom Bolt coming down. We see that, yep. Yeah. It's the Doom Bolt. Let's see if it connects. It did connect. It may have hit some friendlies. Yeah, Zark Zarkon is not long for this world. Nice debuffing that's going on on those characters, and a valiant effort to get Zarkon away there. He's trying to save his sorcerer who got caught by the Minotaurs. Boy, yeah, this is a bad position to be in for the Druki. Their leader is not long for this world. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a pun intended, corny build, which is exactly what Wicked told me about it. It is a very corny build in the sense that it is a lot of goon power, and it's a lot like corn to just bring tremendous melee power 
in a few units. I, I think the Druki made a big mistake here by not bringing some missiles. I think the right unit against Corn, if I just had to, to take a guess at it, would probably include Scourge Runners and Crossbow Cavalry. And between the two of those, they're not super easy for Corn to catch. Yes, you still do have to protect them, but they have pretty good mobility. And they're not super easy for Corn to tie down. Um, and then they can also shoot far enough to keep the Marauder Horseman with throwing axes back. Um, and then, if that's the case, these melee characters also have to worry about running into those. So we'll see what happens here, but I just, I don't think there's any way at this point that these goons can be stopped by the Truki. I think the Truki are just going to be in a holding pattern of getting their skulls ripped out and added to the throne. Um, we're going to see the, the sorceress here get shut down, and Korn just continues to push all their units through here. Yeah, I mean, a pit of shades is not going to do anything to these single entities. There was really not much here, other than the, the Marauder Horseman, the pit of shades would have done anything to it. It wouldn't have done much to them. I understand why you bring it, because Korn has a lot of really tough infantry, but the pit of shades is not well suited here. Um, what would have been better is like a soul stealer. So like Malekith was soul stealer. Um, and some missiles, what I think would have gone a long way against this kind of build because Soul Stealer can pull hit points from all these units, and missiles can, uh, you know, do missile things and also take away hit points. Let's fast forward, see what happens here. So I, I mean, you can see the Druki not wanting to overcommit here, but at the same time, if you don't commit, you're going to lose. Um, but I mean, the terror routes are going to be real. Like I mean, they're they're going to be real bad. And fighting Scarbrand and the Blood Brute Behemoth like that, not where you want to be in life. Um, but that's where you end up when you don't have, you know, those units. So again, I, I think that Scourge Runner Chariots and Crossbow Cavalry, probably a must against Corn. Will you have a tricky time defending them? Quite possibly, yes. But it's worth it. And I think if you go with those units, it'll pay some big dividends against Corn. Um, because, you know, if you can if you can just shut down their ability to get to those cavalry, you've got something to depend on. And those crossbow cavalry would have caused considerable damage to these. Y'all tell me what you think about the Druki pick. I, 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 again, I think coming with no missiles is just a no-no. I understand it to a degree, right? I understand it, but you're also trying to go play Korn's game with Korn, and that is hard. That is hard to do, um, and it's going to take a lot to shut down these potential units. Now, granted, if I came up against someone with Korn, I'm not thinking they're going to bring Scarbrand, ROR Bloodthirster, and the Bloodboot Behemoth, right? That I'm... Not in a million years, and I think they're going to bring that. However, Scarbrand is a very real possibility. And like a Bloodthirster to back him up is a very real possibility. So, yeah, you're going to have to bring something to deal with him. And uh, although he does have a lot of missile resistance, missiles are probably still one of the better ways to go. Now, if you had a couple of big Charybdis units, and let's say that you had some Blackguard and Charybdis, you might be able to pull out a melee win here. Um, even still, I think it would be very tough because the Blood Brute Behemoth and that Bloodthirster are very, very good. Um, but it, it certainly would have made it a lot harder, you know, for them to pull in and do that. Anyway, you all tell me what you think of this one. I thought this was pretty crazy. Uh, again, a risky pick uh, from both players, but in this case, paid off um, for for Wicked and his corn armies. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you all soon with some more action in Total War Warhammer 3.